This video will use data to argue that physical silver is currently a buyer's market, and that even though prices are up from recent lows, now may not be a good time to sell. In an effort to understand what's going on in the market, I've been collecting data for several months, data that's only available here, together with public data to show that demand is low. Not only demand from buyers, but dealers are offering lower premiums to buy back silver, meaning they have plenty of inventory and don't need your stack. Let's get into it. This is the third in this Don't You Dare series, which considers timing in the buying and selling of physical gold and silver. Some viewers have mistaken the titles for giving financial advice, or in other words, me trying to tell you what to do. This video series was intended as a view into my own market analysis, my own thought processes that go into deciding when to take action in the market. Stacking precious metals involves buying and eventually selling and preferably we can get that timing right. By looking at market data, both public and proprietary, I believe we can do that. With that being said, let's review this chart. You subscribers to the channel have seen this before, the Silver Purchase Index. Maybe an older version, but this one has been updated for October 30th. What we're looking at here is the purchase transaction volume for silver from online dealers. Think of this chart as demand for physical silver. Going back to August, we saw a surge in demand caused by a crash in silver premiums. And then early September, an increase in demand was caused by the decline in silver spot price. Then a huge ramp up in early October due to the crash in spot price. Today, in our most recent action, we find a flight to safety due to the conflict in the Middle East. Notice there was a demand decrease in this flight to safety because all the action was in gold, not silver. Here's what that looks like. We see a little bump in gold demand. In terms of volume, that's not a lot of strength. Sure, gold price is up a bit, but not with much conviction. So far, spot prices and premiums are far more powerful in forcing volume. At this point, I wouldn't expect the conflict in the Middle East to result in much more flight to safety premium in gold, but the risk is high that could change. Gold futures also show a pullback in volume since that initial October 13th flight to safety and are now back down to normal. There's just not a lot of action going on. It looks more like consolidation. Since silver never really did participate in the gold flight to safety, but did surge in price in sympathy with gold, it's safe to conclude that for now, gold and silver prices are coupled. Low premiums tell us two things. First, demand for physical silver is down. A lot of this is likely to do with a slowing economy. Over on CNBC, Target CEO says shoppers are pulling back, even on groceries. But even in food and beverage categories, over the last few quarters, the units, the number of items they're buying, has been declining. We're seeing the same behavior in precious metals. Lower premiums tell us that. Our own silver purchase index tells us that. The second thing that low premiums tell us is that dealers are not willing to pay as much as before to buy our silver. They don't need it. They've got lots of inventory already. Here's a website from a local dealer here in Oregon. This shows the amount above or below they're willing to pay to buy your silver. Right off the bat, one ounce silver rounds are only getting 50 cents below spot. Just a few months ago, they were offering spot or a little over. Now we're less than spot. $1.50 for silver eagles and spot for maples. Oddly, philharmonics are 25 cents below spot, and since other sovereign coins aren't listed, my guess is they're also bringing below spot. We're talking silver Britannias, Krugerrands, and kangaroos. Obviously, this is not a good seller's market. This is a buyer's market. 10 ounce bars are $1 below spot. The same for kilo bars and recognizable 100 ounce bars. And look at this, $1.20 below spot for generic 100 ounce bars. Yesterday, November 1st, Powell, speaking for the Fed, did not raise interest rates, which is exactly what everyone expected. In addition, he hinted that this could be the last hike, and that has the stock market cheering, while at the same time, treasury yields are falling. 
The 10-year is down 119 basis points already. Just a couple of weeks ago, it was hovering around 5%, a psychologically bad number. You all know that this reduces the opportunity cost of holding zero-yield bullion and is good news for silver. The Fed isn't likely to raise in December, with the CME Fed Watch tool pricing in only a 5% chance of increasing rates. But at this point, I don't think anybody cares. They're looking at where the hockey puck is going, and that is lower interest rates. That answers the where part of the question, but it doesn't answer the when part. When will rates start to roll over to begin heading lower? Everyone's best guess seems to be around Q3 of next year. Anything could happen by then, but odds are in favor of QE and lower rates in the second half. Even though the Fed says higher for longer, higher for longer is the mantra now, a rolling over is likely to happen and will be good for precious metals, i.e. higher prices, which is another reason not to sell now. 2024 will almost certainly bring higher average prices for silver. Hold on to your silver if you can. And that wraps up today's video. If you found it informative, be sure to smash that like button to help others discover it as well. To stay updated with our latest content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications by tapping the bell icon. For those already safeguarding against uncertainties by investing in precious metals like silver and gold, ensure you're making your purchases at the best prices. Visit citystacker.com where you'll find the best deals on precious metals bullion from top online dealers. The link can be found in the description for your convenience. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.